Welcome to our video on the top smartphones of 2023. We'll be reviewing the latest devices based on performance, camera, battery life, and value for money to help you choose the right one for you. First one, Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. This smartphone is an amped up Galaxy Note with a faster S Pen built in, lots of camera improvements, a brighter display, and faster charging. This is a stellar phone overall, but it's also pretty pricey and the battery life could be better. It's super versatile, ready for important work, handwritten notes, gaming, and casual big screen web browsing. And the cameras are a clear highlight, with the space zoom capabilities taking you to infinity and beyond. It combines the best of the Galaxy S Ultra with the best of the Galaxy Note Ultra to check off almost all the boxes for power users. In addition to top specs and extensively supported, feature-packed software, the Galaxy S22 Ultra boasts a plethora of productivity tools unmatched by the competition. While it's somewhat lacking in soul, that doesn't take away from the technical marvel that is the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Second one, Apple iPhone 14 Pro, it is the best phone for under $1,000. It's powerful, has amazing cameras, sports a beautiful display, and the notch is dead. It's hard to think of anything truly wrong with this device, and it's perfect for people tired of giant handsets. It doesn't take long to set the phone up, and if you're changing from another iPhone, Apple provides everything from extra temporary iCloud storage and fast account transfer to make it really simple. The iPhone 14 Pro Max delivers a solid all-round experience as Apple's latest and greatest smartphone offering of the year. Barring the high pricing, which isn't surprising at all, the device scores in most aspects of smartphone usage, including display, performance, and camera. Third one, Google Pixel 7 Pro, this smartphone is excellent, if not the smartphone of the year 2022. It offers extremely high speed, which means there are no jerks and perfect fluidity when navigating through the menus. The performance, therefore, is perfectly there, the display of the screen is also excellent with very good brightness from its very large curved screen which is easily tamed, despite its size. The autonomy is quite satisfactory even if it can be criticized for a very slow charge. For us, this is its only flaw. We appreciate its waterproof character, worthy of its rank, and what about the photos it produces, surpassing the results we have been able to obtain from other smartphones. Fourth. OnePlus 10 Pro, it is a very good device. It meets the specifications on almost all levels with its neat design, excellent screen, good fluid interface, comprehensive photo benefits and very solid performance. Clearly, it didn't steal its title as a high-end smartphone. Simply, it just lacks that little extra that would make the big difference compared to the competition. We are dealing here with a smartphone that will greatly please, but without unleashing crowds and passions. A safe and pleasant bet, but without being a favorite. We can therefore really recommend this smartphone to someone looking for a good product under the 1000 euro mark, but it will be difficult to pour over it for hours. Fifth, Oppo Find X5 Pro. It's been two years since Oppo came to titillate the best on the market with its Find X range and this Find X5 Pro falls completely into the ultra premium category, justifying its very high price, which is quite rare. It does not suffer from any real off-putting flaws and its few weaknesses are generally compensated for. Its autonomy, for example, is correct, nothing more, but its fast charge saves the deal. Its zoom is lazy, but the precision of its two other sensors makes it easy to do without it, especially since the general experience of this Find X5 Pro is really pleasant from start to finish. It's still a little early to award him anything today, but in any case he presents all the necessary criteria to claim the title of smartphone of the year. Sixth, Motorola Edge 30 Ultra, the design of the Motorola Edge 30 Ultra is well done. If the finishes may not have the same softness and precision of other smartphones, it is very pleasant in the hand and light. Motorola is primarily focused on making it easier to access features that already exist, and we love it for that. His follow-up on security patches is also very valuable. The Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 never ceases to be a pleasure to use. The heat is well under control by Motorola, although it requires unlocking the best performance through gaming mode. While the raw performance is potentially there, the Motorola Edge 30 Ultra lacks quality in its processing, resulting in a frustrating experience and disappointing pictures. A Scud of Photophone, perhaps, but which does not live up to its marketing or its rivals. 
In the end, here is a premium smartphone that does not demerit in the least, but which perhaps comes out of the oven of its developers a little too soon. 7th, Sony Xperia 1 4. Sony is back for a new batch of high-end phones after the Xperia 1 3 with a very attractive proposal. The Sony Xperia 1 4, the first phone to integrate a real optical zoom. So its 21.9 format and 4K screen allow it to stand out. You can actually enjoy a great cinema experience and a more or less decent screen. Second big sticking point, its chip, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is known to cause smartphones to heat up significantly. Again, the Xperia has only reinforced this idea. The interface, certainly a little more pleasant thanks to the addition of Android 12 and Material U, has also had the bad idea of constantly reminding us of this untimely heating, sometimes to the point of preventing the phone from working properly. Combined with the phone's fairly average battery life and barely average charging, there really isn't much that saves the Sony Xperia 1 4. 8th, Apple iPhone 13 mini, it is an iPhone 13. But mini. With all the pros and cons that entails. Compared to the previous Mini, however, this version manages to erase one of the main flaws of small smartphones. It offers viable autonomy. On the advantage side compared to the normal iPhone 13, we can mention the comfort of use and portability. As for the disadvantages, they are also quite classic, we benefit less from multimedia content. However, two problems could have been avoided, the uncomfortable notch on certain video formats 18,9. And above all, the interface sometimes takes up slightly too much space on the screen. A bug which however tended to disappear at the end of the test. On arrival, the iPhone 13 mini is above all a smartphone for technology enthusiasts, with an extremely powerful chip, a great screen and a thunderous interface, but which are not aimed nor have an ultra-use intense from their smartphone. 9th, Google Pixel 6a, at less than 500 euros, the Google Pixel 6a is the smartphone to recommend on two criteria, photo quality and software experience. For the first point, this device particularly impresses with its portrait mode and night vision. Everything is not perfect, the ultra-wide angle for example still has a good margin for improvement, but it is a clear success in this price bracket. We do not feel a lack vis a vis the main sensor whose definition is only 12.2 MPX. The algorithms compensate without worry. Added to this, therefore, is an interface that is up-to-date, neat, pleasant to use, intelligent and equipped with interesting customizations via Material U. It is therefore with full knowledge of the facts that we must apprehend this Pixel 6a. Excellent in photography and software frankly critical on the refresh rate and the recharge. For the rest, the phone offers satisfaction on the content design, which is very practical for small hands. 10th, Motorola G82. This smartphone is a really solid mid-range phone, although it doesn't elicit much joy on the design side. It looks a bit generic and is a bit difficult to use at times. If you can get past it, or are used to larger phones anyway, you'll find a spec list that packs some pretty solid punches. The cameras are extremely decent, while the display is what you'd frankly expect to see on a much fancier phone. Together they form a very good package, which is pleasant to use and has some notable advantages. Thank you for watching and we hope you found this video helpful in your search for the perfect smartphone. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to reach out.